Can we praise him all across the house tonight? He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, he's worthy of my praise. He's worthy of my worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's good to take that mask off. I'm not going to lie. When we were doing the I am who I am because the I, I, I thought I was going to pass out. Uh, it's uh, my honor to be back here. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I love and appreciate and give honor to your pastor and first lady, to their family, to the leadership of this church. So many of you I consider friends, and I love and appreciate you. and Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, this is a crazy world that we are living in. And we're just, we're navigating through uncharted waters. And, uh, but I'm glad I know who the captain of my ship is. I'm thankful uh, that Jesus is the captain of our salvation. And as long as he's on the throne, I know everything's going to be all right. And uh, we're going to be okay. Looking forward to what God's going to do tonight, what God's going to do this week. And expecting great things. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Psalms. Psalms, the 91st chapter. We'll read verses 1 through 4. Psalms 91, verses 1 through 4. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. And in verse number four is what I want you to really draw attention to tonight. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Psalmist said, he shall cover thee. I want to preach tonight on this simple thought, God's got you covered. Would you set your Bibles down, lift your hands and hearts to heaven. Let's talk to him one more time. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your spirit that is so powerful in this place right now. God, I'm asking you to anoint me to preach your anointed word. God, anoint your people to hear your word, receive your word, and most importantly, to respond to your word. Speak to us tonight, God. Let us leave this place and let us leave this week challenged and changed by your spirit and by your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Why don't you clap your hands one more time? And the Bible says not only to clap your hands, but shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You can be seated this evening. One of life's greatest questions is, are you covered? Do you have enough money to cover the situation you're in? Do you have enough insurance to cover your house, your, your, your vehicles, your health? Are you recovered in your retirement plan? Do you have enough setbacks so when you retire that you're covered? Dave Ramsey made the words emergency fund famous. And there's a lot of people over these last few months that wish they'd had an emergency fund. But it's all about being covered. But I'm here tonight not to talk about money, not to talk about insurance, not to talk about retirement or an emergency fund. But I'm here to tell you that God has you covered tonight. In Psalms 23, David begins his psalm with th these words. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So David begins painting a picture of a God that leads us. A God that goes before us. I read a story a long time ago of a missionary that got lost in an African jungle. There was nothing around him but the bush and a few cleared spaces. 
He finds a local hut and he asks the native if he could help him find his way out. The native said he could and the missionary said, all right, show me the way out. So they walked and they hacked their way through the unmarked jungle for what seemed like hours. The missionary got a little worried and he asked the native, he said, are you quite sure that this is the way? Where is the path? The native replied, in this jungle there is no path. I am the path. And I want us to understand tonight, we're living in a jungle. We're living in a wilderness. And there is only one path. There is only one way. There is only one way out of what we're in, and that is Jesus Christ tonight. He is leading us through this life. He is leading us through what we're going through. In Exodus 13, 21, it says, The Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud. Notice this, to lead them in the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. So God, on the way out of Egypt into the wilderness... God would lead them by a pillar of cloud by day to protect them from the desert scorching heat. Then he would turn into a pillar of fire by night to keep them warm during the desert's cooler nights. A pillar of fire to ward off bandits and nocturnal predators. Deuteronomy 1 and 30 says this about God, The Lord your God which goeth before you, He shall fight for you. We serve a God who's going before us. We serve a God who's clearing the path. We serve a God who's on our side. We serve a God who's fighting for us tonight. Deuteronomy 9 and 3 says, Understand therefore this day that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee. As a consuming fire, he shall destroy them, and he shall bring them down before thy face. So shalt thou drive them out and destroy them quickly, as the Lord has said unto thee. I want you to understand today that God has you covered. And how He, one of the ways he has you covered tonight is he is a God that goes before you. I'm thankful that I don't have to worry about tomorrow because he's already in my tomorrow. I don't have to worry about next week because he's already in my next week because he's a God that goes before me and he prepares the way. He orders my steps. He guides my feet. I don't, I'm don't. i not afraid tonight because he's a God that has me covered. And not only is he a God who goes before me, but Exodus 14, talking about that same pillar, says, And the angel of God which went before the camp of Israel, notice this, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. So the the, the pillar of cloud that once led them now is behind them. And notice what it did. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, the the Egyptians. But it gave a light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. So the pillar of cloud that once led them now has removed and went behind them. And the Bible says, it's amazing to me, that the same pillar of cloud gave light to the Israelites, but was darkness to the Egyptians. And it's amazing to me in this world that we're living in, what the world calls darkness, the church sees as light. 
What the world says is the end. The, 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 the church says this is only the beginning. What the world says is going to destroy us. The church rises up in the year 2020 and says, yes, there may be a lot of darkness in the world, but I believe it's making an opportunity for the church to shine brighter than it ever has before. What is darkness to them is only light to us because we have a God who has us covered tonight. David writes in that psalm, same Psalm 23 he talks about a God who leads but in, he opens with that and then he closes with these words surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever so David begins that psalm writing about a God who leads. And you know, there's some days that I feel God leading me. There's some days it feels like I, I can't mess up. There's some days it feels like everything I touch turns to gold. It's like God is just orchestrating and I don't have to worry because He's leading me. But you know what? There's some days that I feel like I make mistakes. There's some days that I fall flat on my face and that's when God says don't worry about it because I'm not not just a God who goes before you, but I'm a God that comes behind with goodness and mercy and I'm going to uh, clean up uh, your mistakes. I'm a God who leads you and a God who follows you tonight. And not only does He lead us and not only does He follow us, but Psalms 142 and 4 says this, I looked on my right hand and beheld there was no man there that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. See, that's what some of us have felt like during this, 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 this pandemic that we're in, this social distancing, this uh, uh, you know, shelter in place and this quarantine. We, we looked on our right hand and there was nobody. We were lonely. We were scared. We were frustrated. We were doubtful. We were fearful. And the psalmist said, I looked on my right hand and beheld there was nobody there for me. But notice what Psalm 16 and 8 says. I have set the Lord always before me. He's a God before me. Because He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Psalms 121 and 5, The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Isaiah 41 and 13, For the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. So he's not just a God who goes before. He's not just a God who comes behind. But when there's nobody else there for me, he's a God that's on my right hand. He's a God that's holding my right hand. He's a God who's whispering in my ear, fear not, everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be okay. I've got you covered tonight. Not only does he go before, not only does he come behind, and not only is he on our right hand, but Job said it like this in Job 23, 9. On the left hand, where he doth work. God's working on me, on my left hand. And I like the song that's popular in Pentecost today. Even though I don't see him, he's working. Even when I don't feel him, he's working. Even though I don't understand what I'm going through, he's working on me. When I don't feel him and when I don't see him, he's still working on me. And when I'm worrying, he's working. When I'm doubting, he's working. When I'm in pain, he's, work he's working on me tonight. Not only is he a God who goes before and behind on my right and on my left, but Deuteronomy 33, 27 says this about our God. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Underneath you are his everlasting arms, 
And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee and shall say, destroy them. You know why I don't have to worry about what's going on in this world? His everlasting arms are underneath me. That No wonder the writer says, rejoice not against me, O my enemy. Though I fall, I shall arise because his everlasting arms are there to pick me up. Yes, I may fall. Yes, I may trip up. But because he's got me covered because his everlasting arms those strong arms are underneath me he can lift me up out of the miry clay he can lift me up out of my sin he can lift me up out of my addiction a just man falleth seven times and rises up again because God is underneath me today and not only is he a God who goes before and a God behind and a God on my right hand and a God on my left hand and a God who's underneath me. But Psalm 99 and 2 says this, The Lord is great in Zion and He is high above all the people. Devil, no wonder your tricks aren't going to work. Devil, no wonder those fiery darts that you're throwing at me aren't going to work. When, when you can't get in on the front and you can't attack me from behind and you can't attack me on the right or the left and you can't come from underneath and you try to launch your attack over God, God's above me. God's protecting me. God is encapsulating me. God has me covered tonight. And not only does he go before us, not only does he come behind, not only is he on my right and on my left and underneath me and above me, but David, in his most famous psalm that we've already read, the first and the beginning, the beginning and the ending of, but in that famous psalm where David starts out writing and, and painting a beautiful picture of a leading God, and then in closing he declares a following God. But I want you to notice in between a leading God and a following God. David pins these words. David says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Notice what David says. He doesn't say the valley of death. He said it's the shadow of death. Because shadows are not what they appear to be. I remember when I was a kid, I almost said little kid, but I don't want to you find folks. When I was a kid, I remember seeing shadows, and I would think that they were a monster. But I realized it was just a light shining on some object that would uh, make a shadow on a wall, and it wasn't what I thought it was. It was just a tree or some other object. It's not what I thought. It was manipulating my mind into thinking it was something that it wasn't. So David said, this is isn't the valley of death it's the shadow of death the enemy wants me to think that this is the end the enemy wants me to think that this is death the enemy wants me to think this is the end of the line but it's just the valley of the shadow of death and let me tell you 2020 looks like the valley of death but it's just the shadow of death don't let the enemy lie to you and th make you think that God has removed himself and God's not there anymore because he's not just a God who lives and a God who protects from behind. But David said when he was at his lowest point in the valley of the shadow of death, he said, I'll fear no evil. Why? Because you're not just going before and you're not just behind anymore, but you are with me. You're closer than you've ever been. Whenever I'm lower than I've ever been, God is closer than he's ever been. When I need him the most, that's when he's closer than he's ever been before. No wonder Job was so confused in Job 23. Job said, Behold, I go forward, but he's not there. Because Job knew he was a God that went before. And backward, but I can't perceive him. Because he knew it was a God that went behind him. Job says, On the left hand where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. See, Job was saying, God, everywhere that you used to be, you're not anymore. But what Job didn't understand was, Job, you were at a place that you've never been before. 
You're at the lowest point. All ten of your children are gone. Your wife has backslid and trying to make you quit. You've lost everything. All your worldly possessions are gone. Job, it's not that God has removed himself, but it's not that he's uh, has not is isn't on the scene anymore. But Job, you're at a place you've never been, and so God is closer than he's ever been in your life before. I've come to tell somebody tonight, you may be lower than you've ever been and it may seem like God's not leading anymore. He's not behind you anymore. It may seem like He's not on the right or on the left, but let me tell you, He's closer than He's ever been before. In your moment of weakness, He's closer. In your moment of sickness, uh, He's closer. In your moment of heartache and depression, He's closer than He's ever been before. But it gets better than that. Because not only is he a God who goes before, and a God behind, a God on my right, a God on my left, a God underneath, and a God above me. But Paul says this in Galatians 3.27, For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. So he's not just a God who goes before me and behind, on the right, on the left, underneath, and above me, and closer than he's ever. But when I take on his name and water baptism, I literally am putting on Christ. No wonder I don't have to be afraid. No wonder he's got me covered. I'm wearing Jesus tonight. And it even gets better than that. Because Paul says in Ephesians 4 and 6, there's one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. So he's not just a God who goes before and a God behind, on my right, on my left, over me, underneath, and closer, and I'm wearing him. But Jesus literally is living inside of me. He's an all-encompassing Christ. He is a surrounding Savior. He is a covering Christ. It reminds me of the song popular back in the 90s. He, he's all over me and He's keeping me alive. He's on my right, He's on my left, He's in the front and back, underneath, over me, and He's living down inside tonight. So I rejoice tonight in the middle of COVID-19 crisis in the middle of coronavirus pandemic while others are doubting and wondering I'm rejoicing tonight why? because I serve a God who has me covered I serve a God who's leading me. I serve a God who's following me. I serve a God who's holding my right hand. I serve a God who's working on my left hand. I serve a God who's lifting me up underneath. I serve a God who's protecting me from above. I serve a God who's closer than he's ever been before. I serve a God that I'm wearing his name in water baptism. I serve a God that that same spirit that raised him from the grave is living inside of me so no devil I'm not going to fall for your tricks no devil I'm not going to be depressed I serve a God that has me covered tonight I wonder if we could all stand if I could sing tonight I'd sing that worship song that's so popular before me behind me Always beside me. Because that's who our God is tonight. Don't you think, don't let, don't let the enemy trick your mind one more time and make you think that God has removed himself from your situation. He can't remove himself. He's a God that has you surrounded. He's a God that has you covered tonight. So as we all bow our heads and close our eyes, I know we're practicing social distancing. But aren't you thankful we serve a Savior that doesn't practice social distance? He's closer than He's ever been. In this 2020 where we, we're in a place we've never been, God's closer than He's ever been. 
When we're, we're going through things that we never thought we'd go through and there's questions of whether we're going to lose our jobs and whether we're going to be able to pay the bills and whether we're going to get sick and whether our family members are going to get sick. I'm thankful. I serve a God who's not social distancing. He's not putting me in quarantine. He's not making me shelter in place. But He's got me covered. And when friends may leave, He'll never leave me. When family may leave, He'll never leave me. He'll He'll never forsake me. He's with me always until the end. So I wonder. I know we, we probably aren't supposed to come to the altar because of social distancing. But I wonder right where you're at tonight. Can we just begin to worship God? Can we just begin to praise Him? Can we just begin to thank Him? God, I'm thankful that You lead me. God, I'm thankful that you're following me. God, I'm thankful you're holding my right hand, telling me not to be afraid. God, I'm thankful that even though I don't see you and I don't feel you, you're working on my left hand. God, I'm thankful that you are going before me. I'm thankful that you're underneath me. I'm thankful that you're above me. I'm thankful that you're closer than you've ever been before. Come on, he's, he's got you completely covered. He's got you completely encapsulated. He's got you completely surrounded tonight. The devil can't touch you unless God allows it. The enemy can't touch you unless God allows it. COVID-19 can't touch you unless God allows it. Because he has you covered tonight. Oh, come on, somebody rejoice with me. Somebody praise a God that has you covered right now. You ought to get excited right now. Some of you, you've been going through some battles in your mind. You've been going through some stress. You've been going through some doubt and fear. But you need to hear this preacher tonight. God's got you covered. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to work in your favor. Because he's a God that has you covered tonight. Come on in. Be sensitive to the Spirit right now. If you feel like getting out and praying for somebody, I, I'm not going to hold you up from that. Be sensitive right now. God's wanting to move in this place. Come on, that's it. Not only does He have us covered tonight, but His angels are going before us. His angels are leading us. His angels are going into our tomorrow. His angels are going before us as we travel home. His angels are directing us. He's leading us and directing us. We don't have to fear what the enemy presents to us. We don't have to fear what the enemy lies to us. We've got a God who has us covered tonight. Come on, He's covering you right now. He's covering you with His blood. He's covering you with His anointing. He's covering you with His power. He's covering you with His strength right now. Come on, that's it. Somebody ought to receive that right now. Somebody ought to speak in tongues right now. Somebody ought to rejoice right now. Somebody ought to shout right now. You serve a God who has you covered tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what's going to happen next week. I don't know what's going to happen next month. I don't know what's going to happen in our country. I don't know what's going to happen in November because of the elections. But I can tell you tonight, with everything that's inside of me, I'm not worried about what's going to happen because I am covered by a God who's got me encapsulated and surrounded tonight. Come on, let's praise Him. Come on, let's worship Him. You wonder why you've not been sick and others have. He's got you covered tonight. 
You wonder why others have died and you're still alive. He's got you covered. You wonder why the car almost hit you but didn't. It's because He's got you covered tonight. He's protecting you. He's leading you. He's directing you tonight. Go ahead, sis.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Awesome. That was an awesome message. You know, I, I like what Brother Moppin was saying about the pillar of the cloud that's light to Israel and darkness to Egypt. And I think that that characterizes the time we're in. So we look around and we see people. They, they can't see what's going on. That's why they're scared. We do. We understand what's going on. We understand that God's allowing it, that many of the things that are happening are already written in the Bible. We can see. So we're not looking at it the same way. It's a great, great opportunity to be, talk to people. That's why they're scared. They can't see. They have, they're in darkness. They have no idea where they're going. Their light had been the economy, their education, the government, the stability of the country, the world. And now that all that seems to be breaking down, their gods are gone, and they're scared. But we know the God that made all things. Amen. We, we've got light in darkness. Amen. And we can talk to those people and say, look, we know where to go. We know a God that knows the path through this. If you want to know, come along with us. Praise God. Amen. Let's stand one more time here tonight. Let's praise God. Lord God, we thank you here tonight for what we've heard. Lord, that you've got us covered. Front, left, right, back, up, down, inside, outside, above, below. Lord God, you got us covered. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. Help us to fix it in our mind. Let it seep into our heart, Lord God, that we'll understand it's not just head knowledge, but that we know it. And Lord, we know that some of the things you're letting us go through is to help us understand in our hearts. You do have us covered. And Lord, we give you thanks and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord. God bless you.